Je vais vous parler des feux anthropiques. I'm going to tell you about anthropogenic fires. Fires which are lit by humans in the natural environment to manage natural resources. Among all phenomena, it is really the only one to which there can be so definitely attributed the opposing values of good and evil. As Bachelard said, there are fires which destroy forests, housing, but there's also fire that heats and cooks. There are these other fires lit by humans in the environment, some of them call them archaic and negative and others useful and beneficial. These anthropogenic fires make fire a tool. It is specific to a social group, a society, it is anchored in its own climate, geology, geography, and it can be found in various areas of the world from the tropical forests all the way up to the boreal ecosystems and in the Mediterranean or temperate climes. Many terms qualify them, you know, slash and burn, fell, pastoral fire, controlled burn and so on and so forth. But behind these anthropogenic fires there are a lot of uh, pieces of knowledge, of local knowledge and practices that are specific to a given ecosystem or territory. The connection between these elements means that the knowledge is subject to change, to change in social dynamics, but also environmental change, meaning that they transform, erode or even disappear. One has to be careful. Um, one must not idealize the practice. There are fires that are deliberately uh, ill-controlled that create huge forest fires or when there's a loss of knowledge, uh, it can be destructive and disastrous. Let me paint a sketch of these anthropogenic fires to show you that there is a powerful interaction with the environment between societies and the environment through these practices. First of all, in North America, two examples, that of the indigenous populations of uh, California and the Anishinaabe of Ontario. These societies have a very fine knowledge of their ecosystem. In California, they developed a very precise botanical knowledge of the plants in all of their ecosystems. It's very important because uh, these plants are raw materials that they use to weave baskets, which is a central part of their society. They develop practices and knowledge to encourage the availability of this vegetable resource. The example shown here is uh, around Balamberger Regans, or uh, bunch grass and fire, acts a bit like cutting to allow full regeneration of the plants, stimulate the production of flowers the stalk of which is used in basket weaving. For the Anishinaabe, an ecological cycle is encouraged. Fire is used to keep the forest clear and open uh, so that there are more uh, bushes, fruit-bearing bushes. And here, uh, these uh, uh, fruits um, are gathered and dried to be consumed later on. So these native populations structure an ecological cycle. Practices and knowledge of these indigenous people have gradually eroded and some have disappeared. This is caused by the effects of colonization, which have a very powerful impact on social dynamics yesterday, as they still do today, about the modalities of transfer of knowledge between generations or of the use of the environment. Other element in North America, prohibition that was made uh, because uh, forests were used for wood, uh, for forestry purposes. If we go and meet the Gagaju of Australia, we can see how ancient some aspects of this knowledge is. For over 5,000 years, the population has developed practices and knowledge illustrated by this uh, calendar here. It shows the diversity of seasons, which are constructed based on dry, wet, hot, cold characters, but also the precision of the naturalistic knowledge of the population, both in botanics and zoology. Here, the flowering of a given tree, or the sound a lizard makes, are seen as ecological indicators, allowing you to signal the start or the end of a season, 
all the best moments to start a fire. For the Gagaju, the fire is kinegetic. It serves to bring uh, to bring prey uh, to a given place or to encourage the growth of a given grass that is going to attract prey. It also serves to prevent um, fire by destroying the litter that's under eucalyptus trees because the litter is highly inflammable. So it's used for preventive purposes. As in previous examples, the knowledge of the Gagaju population eroded or transformed over time after colonization, but also after the displacement of populations to create national parks. The Australian example is also very interesting because it illustrates the complex relationships between uh, the uh, stewards of protected spaces and the confrontation or conflict uh, that may arise, as well as cooperation. But it would now seem that a number of elements are leading to co-management by the national park authorities and the local populations, and acceptance of the role of fire in these ecosystems, and at least curiosity for the knowledge transferred by local populations. One should not only think that anthropogenic fires are purely exotic or ancient. There are anthropogenic fires in Europe, and I developed research about pastoral fires in the Cévennes region. It's a recent practice that developed in the course of the 20th century as uh, agriculture changed. In this medium altitude region, agro-pastoral practices changed. Uh, the nature of the herds changed. These transformations resulted, or at least one of the consequences, was uh, the growth of brush, uh, pine, etc., uh, uh, made the grass necessary for pasture uh, disappear. In view of the relief and the very rocky terrain, it is not possible to mechanize uh, the removal of uh, bushes and brush and fires seem to be uh, the best way to manage the pastures. By using this fire, the bushes and dry grass are eliminated uh, because they prevent growth of the grass and they prevent access from the, from the animals. The fire takes into account precipitation, snow or rain, the wind, the inclination of the terrain, but also the temperature and the humidity of the soil and air. And it is a knowledge that is deeply attached to each patch of land. This pastoral fire in the Cévennes uh, is part of a broader context. It is caught in the crossfire, so to speak. Issues of conservation of biodiversity, on the one hand, through the National Park of the Cévennes and risks of uh, the uh, summer forest fires uh, in the summer around the Mediterranean. What one can note in the Cévennes is that there is a convergence of the objectives of the three stakeholders. Of course, pastoral fires allow herders to obtain grass for their herds in the spring. But by keeping the terrain open, they encourage a certain degree of biodiversity that's interesting for the national park authorities. And spaces that are burnt in the winter will not burn in the summer and make excellent fire protections for the fire brigade. So anthropogenic fires can uh, be uh, favorable and beneficial to humans. They allow management of natural resources directly basket weaving, fruits, indirectly through pastoral fires to encourage the production of grass for the herds, but also fire, which produces grass to attract prey. These anthropogenic fires are also increasingly used by uh, those who are stewards of natural spaces, spaces to prevent forest fires and to maintain ecosystems and biodiversity. It is, however, a paradox. Our interest for the fire is often disconnected from acknowledgement of the knowledge of local populations. Although some fires are not good, others are good and beneficial. In the current context of social and environmental change, the knowledge is evolving, transforming, but also disappearing. 
It is therefore important to study the knowledge and to think about new ways in which they could be used as tools for management.